Right, here's the example then using the vector cost product. Okay, I keep calling it vector cost product. Sometimes it's just called the vector product. Sometimes it's called the cost product. Okay, right, so simple question. Find a vector that's perpendicular to both these vectors. So you've got a vector here, 4i plus 3j plus 2k, and a vector here, 8i plus 3j plus 3k. Okay. Why I might want to do that? Like I said, you know, for example, an applied maths question or mechanics question, you might want to know a direction that's perpendicular to these two. Okay. All right, so, get your notes ready. What do you do? All right, this is what you do. The first thing you do is write out what we call the determinant. So the i, j, k is always the top row, and then it doesn't matter which order you do it in. Okay, I just normally do it in which order they appear, kind of makes sense. So the first vector is that, you write out as a row, 4, 3, 2, and the next vector is that, you write out as the third row, 8, 3, 3. Now you're going to hear me refer to these as rows, elements, and determinants, um, and you're going to hear those same words come up when I do matrices. Vectors and matrices are linked together in an extraordinary way. Okay. Um, so you work out what that is. Then you just break it up into the three separate um, components, okay? So remember what to do. So the I, okay, now this is what I do mentally, but I'll just do it physically for you. I'll just cover up the I, okay? And I just imagine I'm crossing out that, row, the, that column and that row, and the numbers I'm left with are three, two, three, three, okay? So there, three. Two, three, three. Okay, then remember to subtract the next one, which is J. It's just, God, this is awkward in my hands, isn't it? Let's just cover that up, okay? And you just cross out everything in that column and that row, all right? So what am I going to left with? So I'm left with four, two, and then eight, three. Oh, that's hurting my arm, that was. And then add it to the last bit, which is K. And then can you imagine when you cross out that row, that column, you're left with 4, 3, 8, 3. So 4, 3, 8, 3. Okay? So you've got I times that determinant, subtract J times that determinant, plus K times that determinant there. Okay? Then work out this is. Okay? You can probably do it in your head. So that times that, subtract that times that. So 9, subtract 6, which is 3. See how quick that was? So 3i, and then you've got 12, subtract 16, which is negative 4. So negative 4 times negative j, so that's positive, 4j. And then you've got 12, subtract 24, which is negative 12, negative 12k. All right, and that's it. That's your answer, okay? Um, I just prefer to write it as 3, 4, negative 12, like that, okay? So that vector there is perpendicular to both that vector there and that vector there, which is quite handy, okay? But we're gonna test that in a minute, okay? In my first video on vector cross product, I mentioned a unit vector, didn't I? Okay, sometimes finding a unit vector is useful, okay? How do you find a unit vector of that? Well, first of all, you look at the magnitude of that, okay? The magnitude of that, okay, is going to be, using Pythagoras' theorem, the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 144, yeah? So the magnitude of that, 144 plus 16, I always start with the big numbers, and then go to the low numbers, because it's easier, I didn't, 144 plus 16, it's 160, 169, okay? So that's, square root of that is 13, right? So the magnitude of that is 13. So what I'm saying is that that vector there has got a magnitude, a size, a length of 13, so to bring it down to a length of 1, you divide by 13. So a unit vector would be 1 13th of that 3, 4, negative 12. So that is what the n hat would be in that formula I gave you right at the beginning, in case you're wondering. Okay? And the rest of it, the mod a, mod b, that's simple. That would be the modulus of that and the modulus of that. And then you've got the sine of the angle. Okay? Um, but yeah, it's just... Let's just let's not worry any more about that. Now, let's say I'm going to demonstrate to you or show you why they're perpendicular. As I'm clearing the board, maybe you have to think about how you do that. How do you show that 
that vector is perpendicular to that and that. No hints, just think about it. Okay, so look, I've got the vector 3, 4, negative 12, okay, is perpendicular to both. And how do you want to show that? Okay. You use the scalar product to do it. Let me write it down. So the scalar product between that and that. So 4, 3, 2. Dot, 3, 4, negative 12. Look out what you get. So you get 12 plus 12, subtract 24, which is zero. What does that mean? Why are you thinking about that? Let me do the other one, because you've got to do it for both of them. Okay, so the other vector is that. Whoops, let's not rub that up. 8, 3, 3, and then dot with that. 3, 4, negative 12. Can you guess what this is going to be? So that's 24 plus 12 subtract 36 equals 0. They're both 0, aren't they? Which is what we hoped for. Okay. Now why is that? Because the scalar product A dot B is equal to mod A mod B cosine theta. And if that is equal to 0, remember that means that theta must be 90 degrees because cos 90 degrees is zero, okay? So they are demonstrating why it works out they're perpendicular to each other, okay? But you don't actually need to show it, really. It's just more of a demonstration, and I kind of wanted to link with you as well the scalar product, how useful it is to quickly um, demonstrate this, okay? I'm hoping you found that example useful and manageable. As I said, it's much easier than numbers, isn't it? Okay, you could probably forget, or not actually forget, but you could probably just put aside the first video I came with the vector cross both at the moment, just look at the numbers, can't you? Okay?